garlic is the most controversial weapon in vampire survivors. Depending on who you talk to, it's either a stale meme for molding streamers to milk for content, or the most overpowered weapon in any game ever. So which is it? There are two common mistakes people make when running garlic. Mistake 1. Players usually discover garlic as noobs, using it to sweep during early game by abusing its instant damage on contact. They naturally proceed by adding more layers of protection around themselves, then read the post-game stats, and say dumb shit like garlic sucks because it falls off. LOSER! YOU'RE A LOSER! But if you stop and look at what really happens, the defensive layers build up to the point that nothing can enter Soul Eater's area of effect, starving it of targets. Therefore, mistake 1, is playing too defensively. Mistake 2. Soul Eater's description says, power increases when recovering HP, but everyone immediately forgets all about this. Aww. And they never stop to consider why garlic evolves when paired with passive regeneration. Huh? The key mechanic missing from their understanding is a damage bonus that stacks up when the player regenerates lost hit points. <coughs> Any source of healing will do, not just Soul Eater's own healing factor. The catch is that overhealing does not count, and won't cause the damage bonus to stack. Going back to our garlic fail example, we see that nothing gets close enough to the player to do any damage, so Soul Eater's primary mechanic is wasted. Therefore, mistake 2, is forgetting the main reason to upgrade garlic to Soul Eater in the first place. But should we really consider these mistakes? I don't know. Keeping threats at a distance and avoiding physical harm are instinctive human actions, so it would really be fair to say that garlic is misunderstood, because it requires a counterintuitive play style, that goes against all our natural urges for self-preservation. Instead of building a safe zone and cowering away from our enemies, we should instead build a death zone. And invite our enemies inside. <laughs> our new build needs to be able to tank plenty of damage, in order to activate Solita's hidden bonus. We start with armor, and hollow heart, for survivability. Healing from Pomerola, Solita, and Bloody Tear, with Candelabrador, Spinach, and Empty Tome, to push damage. Clock Lancer turns a spot for its OP crowd control. The last three weapon slots can be filled according to personal preference, but don't take Bibles, Water, Birds, or Laurel. Fire Wand, Lightning Ring, and Cherry Bomb, all provide good support damage without ruining the mechanics of the build. For our character selection, we go with Antonio, he starts with Whip, boosts his damage 50% with XP, has plus 20 max HP, and plus 1 armor, making him a natural tank. For power-ups, we go with everything we already spec'd passives into, along with the usual suspects for utility and fast leveling. Garlic's reputation won't be fixed by some 50-hour Randy making a cheese build video that's only viable situationally. Only a task worthy of Hercules himself can rescue the gaming world's opinion of garlic, so... Time to nut up or shut up. My goal is to complete Ultra Dairy Plant, with 50% curse enabled, without revives, and reaching at least level 100. To force reliance on garlic for primary damage, instead of filling the empty build slots with anything good, I'll be banishing random crap at level 1. I only have two charges of banish unlocked, so I'll put knife in the third slot. If this masochistic display doesn't convince Garlic's critics that it's the smart gamer choice, they're probably already brain damaged beyond saving. Or, if I can't pull this off, I guess we'll just have to swallow our pride, and get used to Garlic's meme status. Transparency Notice I'm exercising some build flexibility this run, taking advantage of Dairy Plant stage loot, to squeeze some extra utility into my spec, provided I can survive long enough to trek every which way across the map to actually find them. One final thing, before we start. 
This was my first full run with this build on this map. I did check the layout in advance to plan my route, and I mulliganed to get early garlic. But I'm basically going into this with no spawn knowledge. I've tried this build before on forest and library. But there was no practice for this, because this was supposed to be the practice. I might as well have just swaggered into the stage and yelled, Come on, have a go if you think you're not enough! This character is seriously tanky from the get-go, but I lean on whip for damage at the start of the run. Bloody tear evolves first, and its soap healing factor immediately turns me into an invincible god. I banish ebony wings and Santa Water, then evolve Soul Eater at 942. It starts out dealing around 35 points of damage per tick. As I move around the map collecting the loot, I pause when the spawns are favorable to farm XP. Damage taken remains manageable, and Soul Eater's damage bonus starts building. At 1310 when I collect Candelabrador, it's hitting for around 60. When I get to wings at 1701, it's doing around 75. At 1903 when I get the last loot, a tract orb, it's up around 80 per tick. 5 minutes later, I hit level 100, and we've reached the damage bonus cap, at 100 to 110 per tick. Even against overwhelming odds, with gimped supporting weapons, the garlic tank build functions flawlessly. By 2830, it's clear that the damage bonus cap has stalled out my kill rate. This is where Clock Lance it steps up to save the run. If we go to slow mo, you can see I'm moving to follow the rotating freeze blasts through the crowd, using the harmless frozen mobs to body block. The crowd is big enough to keep Soul Eater's death zone full at all times and the extra contact damage ticks let me stat bad all the way to the time limit. We finish the run at level 118, all objectives completed. It's good to see Soul Eater achieve solid damage numbers, but it was also interesting to experience the game as tank class, rather than a glass cannon. I didn't have to worry about a momentary lapse in situational awareness getting me insta-killed by some surprise damage spike, or pixel-perfect pathing through a crowd of mobs to preserve every precious hit point. Instead, I could just charge headlong into huge crowds of mobs, squeezing every last drop of potential damage out of Soul Eater, by keeping the death zone as populated as possible, whittling down their numbers, but always with one eye on how my health pool was trending. I can't honestly say that this build wouldn't have been better using Labora, instead of Soul Eater, except perhaps in terms of mobility, but sometimes pushing something suboptimal to its limits is a good time too. It would also be nice if the endgame stats show damage taken and healing done, to reward players with some dopamine points for exploring different build options, and maybe we'll see them in a future patch. Thanks for watching my TED talk, and please subscribe to my channel. Now get out there, flaunt your big dick openness, bask in the rain of salty tears, and enjoy your garlic correctly.